Hi, I'm Adam from Midwest Panel Builders, and today we're going to discuss the Garmin GAD27. The GAD27 is kind of a jack of all trades of sorts. It does a lot of different things for us in an aircraft, uh, mainly things to do with airframe electrical. Uh, so for example, it does trim and flaps control, it does uh, landing light slash wigwag control, it will do uh, different things with discrete inputs, it's got nine of them. Uh, it also has PWM and DC lighting bus controls inside of it, um, and a couple other neat little features that uh, we'll get into detail on here. All right, so first we'll talk about the trim control portion. This device has three axis trim control on it, so that's gonna be pitch, roll, and yaw. Uh, it's all handled through this connector for the powers inputs and outputs, and then through this connector for the actual control inputs. So for pitch and roll trim, we have pilot and co-pilot inputs, uh, with the pilot's inputs always taking priority over the co-pilot's. And then with the yaw input, we only have one, because most people would have like a switch on the panel or something to run that. This unit can pass through one amp per motor for trim control. So if you have higher powered trim motors like say on a Kit Fox where they have uh, that larger arm on it, you would need some kind of external tr uh, trim booster like the TCW trim booster for example. So what's great about doing the trim through this versus like an external relay deck is that all of the relay switching is actually contained within this box and you also get to take advantage of some of Garmin's smart features with trim like cutoff times for runaway uh, and being able to reverse your motor current and everything right through this without having to go through a mess of wiring mechanical devices. Okay, so now with the flaps on this unit. So this unit will do uh, up to 10 amps of motor current. So we use these ring terminals up top. We have power and ground input, and then we have two outputs. And then polarity on those outputs reverses depending on which direction the motor's moving. We have two methods of control on here. We have absolute or relative. With either one, we use the GEA24. We use one of the general purpose inputs for flat position. And then the GAD27 will command to those positions. Relative position is like using a motorcycle transmission, it's uh, sequential, so you go from up one, two, three, and then back three, two, one, up. Uh, if you have some of the RVs that have reflex flat positions, it'll do that as well. Absolute position uses a rotary switch input, so you say, you know, one, two, three, or whatever, wherever you put it is where the flaps are going. So some people like that because you actually have the physical switch to look at, to know where your flaps at least should be at all times. Um, me personally, I prefer the toggle switch method because it allows me to put it on the sticks. Uh, and then I also have the flap indicator on the G3X display. And of course you can always look out the window too. One thing that's nice with doing the relative position mode is that unlike absolute positioning, there is flap overspeed protections that you can program in as well. Like the trim control inputs, you have two independent flap control inputs if you're using the relative positioning mode. If you're using the absolute positioning mode, all of the inputs are being used for that rotary switch. There's also inputs on here for limit switches. So you can install little micro switches on your uh, flap control rod. And then when that switch is hit either up or down, it will stop motor movement. All right, so let's talk about some of the lighting control features of this unit. So on the top of this, we have ring terminal inputs for two more lights, 10 amps each, and we have the corresponding outputs. We will then use switch inputs to control those. The switch inputs that we have available are for light one and light two, and then we have an additional one called alternate flash, which is otherwise known as wigwag. With the wigwag, we can do it based on that switch input, so the way that we do it is we use a three position switch, down is off, middle is wigwag, up is landing lights because we do one light from each wing, the landing lights on the TSIs. With the GAD27 in the G3X system, you can also do airspeed based flashing. So you can say 85 knots, if I go above that speed, then flash my lights. What's nice is if you're using that, you can set your light priority to your switch input. So if your switch input is only landing lights on and off and you do not have a wigwag switch, you can do your airspeed based lighting, but then when you turn on your landing light switch, it'll default to constant on. Like other wigwag devices, if you have uh, HID or xenon lights, you can do warm up timers so that you don't blow those out. And then it will say wait, uh, I think it's up to 15 seconds that you can have it wait before it'll start doing your alternate flashing. Some additional lighting features that we have on here are gonna be six lighting bus outputs and three lighting bus command inputs. So what that means is the three command inputs would be like rheostats on your instrument panel, 
and then those can control up to six outputs. Three of them are PWM, so pulse width modulated, and three of them are just standard DC. The DC outputs would be used for things like your G3X displays lighting bus inputs um, or other voltage-based controls. Uh, your PWM, up to a half an amp each, would be used to dim LEDs. So you could hook up like these panel LEDs to the SCAD27 and dim them right through this without having to use any external devices. So next we'll talk about the discrete inputs briefly. So there's a total of nine on this device. Seven of them are active lows, two of them are active highs. They work the same way as the GEA24 discrete inputs where you can trigger different G3X functions or you can do your own uh, user custom alerts. So the last neat little feature about this GAD27 is that it's actually a power conditioner as well. So ring terminals one and two, uh, particularly one being the input, you can go down to five volts DC on that and ring terminal two will have a nice solid 12 volt output up to three and a half amps. There's a couple of different things you can do with it. The Garmin sanctioned thing to do is to hook up your G3X display to it and uh, your ancillaries like your GSU25, for example, so that on engine start, they don't blank out on you. We actually do something pretty neat with this that's a little bit different. And uh, we have a part two of this video coming out on our customers only page. So if you're one of our customers and you're a member of that page, look out for that because we'll discuss some of the different things we do with this unit. I have also a quick announcement. On October 1st and 2nd, 2022, we're doing an avionics and aircraft build seminar. You're welcome to join. Uh, we have a link on our Facebook page and uh, sign up for that. We're gonna be doing uh, avionics topics such as how to fly these things, uh, some of the wiring uh, caveats of it, the different setup, and then on the last day, on the second, we're actually gonna have a little hands-on harness building session. So if you haven't uh, already, check that out. Thanks for watching this brief overview of the GAD27 electronic adapter. Like I just said, we're going to have a second version of this video coming out on our customers only Facebook page. In that video, we'll talk about like the power conditioner trick that I was just talking about, as well as how to set this unit up on the G3X. And we're also going to go a little bit more in depth on what we can do with those discrete inputs. So again, if you're not uh, a member of our customers only Facebook page and you are a customer of ours, be sure to request membership. If you're already a member and you're subscribed to that page, uh, stay tuned, we'll be coming out with this soon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.